Well, hello there. It is great to see you. Welcome to Let's Explore Mongolia. Across four sessions, we'll be going on an incredible journey across the amazing country of Mongolia. In this episode, we're going to learn what Mongolia is like, discovering a little about its history, what it's famous for, and even some of the really cool animals that you can find there. But before we start, I want to check, have you got your map of Mongolia and sticker sheets with you? I've got mine here, so you need to make sure that you've got yours too. At the end of each video, you'll be able to add some stickers to your map to help you remember what we discover. And if you send a picture of you with your completed map after all four sessions, you'll receive a special reward as a certified Mongolia explorer. Now, let's get started. Even if you've never heard of Mongolia before, you might not know where it is in the world. It's a really big nation in the northeast of Asia. If you look at a map of the world, Mongolia can be found sandwiched between two enormous countries, Russia and China. It looks quite small compared to those two countries, but it's not small at all. Even so, most people here at home know very, very little about it. Okay, now that we know where to find Mongolia on the map, we need to get there. Mongolia is very far away from home and it takes a long time to get there, even on a plane. Not many planes actually fly to Mongolia, but after some searching, I've got us some tickets. It's going to take us over 10 hours to get there. I hope you're able to sleep on the plane. After hours on the plane, um, we are finally cruising above the land of Mongolia and we are about to land. As you look out of the window of the plane, you get your first glimpse at what this place is like. Below you, the land stretches out as far as the eye can see. It's really flat and really dry uh, with very few fields or trees. You, you search for signs of human activity or, or life like buildings or houses or roads, but you, you can't see anything. Nothing seems to be moving at all. What you are seeing are the vast plains of Mongolia. Huge areas that make up this country but seem to have very little in them. In some of our later sessions, we're going to see that there is life in the plains but it is a very different way of living. Did you know that because of these vast plains, Mongolia is known as the land of eternal blue sky. When you look at the landscape, it's so flat that the sky seems to be enormous. Oh, I think the plane is about to land. We, we have finally arrived, but where exactly are we? Well, we've landed in the capital city of Mongolia, which is called Ulaanbaatar. I'm sure you'll agree with me that Ulaanbaatar is a very, very strange name. This is how it's spelt. Have you ever seen the letter A so many times in one name before? Ulaanbaatar has five A's in it. It is a very unusual name for a city indeed. After we collect our luggage in the airport, we meet a nice man called Batar. He is a Christian working in Mongolia and he's going to be our guide over the next three sessions to this country. We clamber into the back of his car and he whisks us off to visit one of the city's most famous sites an enormous statue of a man called Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan is the most famous Mongolian who ever lived. Around 800 years ago, this fearsome warrior and conqueror was feared for his powerful army. He and his army conquered much of the world and built something called the Mongol Empire. And it was so big it contained all of China, most of Asia, including the Middle East, 
and even some of Eastern Europe. It was and is one of the largest empires we have ever seen in history. Now, Mongolia today is not quite that big, but the Mongolian people are still proud of their ancestors' achievements. As we talk to Batar about that huge empire, he tells us that Mongolia was actually part of another empire just over 30 years ago. Mongolia was part of the Soviet Union, which was controlled by Russia, and it was a communist state. Because of this, Christianity was not welcome, and it was a very, very difficult place to talk to people about Jesus. For many, many years, people prayed that Mongolia would change and become a place where Christians could share about Jesus openly. Amazingly, God answered those prayers. And even though most Mongolians don't believe in any God, the church is still growing there. Batar also tells us that very few people actually live in Mongolia at all. In fact, it's the most scarcely populated country in the world. Just three and a half million people live here. That's about the same population as Wales in a country over 70 times its size. Do you remember seeing the, the vast plains with little life as we were flying in? Well, this explains why. There are huge areas of Mongolia that actually don't have anyone living there at all. Batar tells us about a place called the Gobi Desert and it makes up about 30% of the country. Here you can find some of Mongolia's wildlife, such as the Cinereus vulture. This is the largest vulture in the world, and it stalks the skies looking for a meal in the desert. Meanwhile, in the far north of Mongolia, there are some mountains where you can find one of the rarest creatures on the planet, the snow leopard. This is a beautiful, huge cat, and, but they're very difficult to find because they're an endangered species. There are very few snow leopards left in the world, but Mongolia is home to a few of them. However, the animal that Mongolia is most famous for is its horses, and we'll learn more about those next time. Isn't it amazing how even in a place as empty and barren as Mongolia, there is still some really cool wildlife to be found? Most of the nation is made up of enormous empty plains, yet creatures like vultures, snow leopards and horses are still living here. For many years, Mongolia was communist and hostile to the good news about Jesus Christ. Back then, Maybe it seemed that the new life that only Jesus can provide would never make it in Mongolia. But the Lord answered people's prayers, opened up the nation, and he is growing his church here. No matter how lifeless or hopeless a situation might seem, the Lord can always bring life when we put our trust in him. It's so important that we put our trust in Jesus as our Lord and Saviour to give us new life and to have our sins forgiven. Have you asked him to do that for you? Just before we finish, let's pray to God. Thank you, Lord, for the land of Mongolia and for the people who live there. Thank you that even when that country rejected you, you had a plan for its people. Thank you for answering prayers and allowing your gospel to be shared openly here. Help us to trust in you completely and to thank you for the new life you brought through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment, some instructions will come up to help you do some activities on your map. So don't forget to press pause to complete all of the steps. I look forward to seeing you next time as we continue our travels through the exciting land of Mongolia. Goodbye for now.